You're listening to the City World Radio Network, high definition digital radio broadcasting from the city to the world. www.cityworldradio.com. Hey, hey, oh, how are you? Another week of being up front with Frank Rothstein on the City World Radio Network. Um, broadcasting to you live, 120 feet off the ground. Not even think it's 120 feet, actually. We're on the sixth floor, whatever that means. Um, I hope everyone had a good week. I hope everyone had a, um, you know, fun Thanksgiving. Uh, let's see, one second. Can you lower that? Yeah, between songs, and you lower that speed. Yeah, we don't need that. Well, not what I'm doing at all. Okay. Just letting everyone know that City World Radio is now broadcasting off of Spreaker.com. So if you're, not, if you're finding our website, cityworldradio.com, you can also find us on Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, Spreaker.com. And, of course, you can find us on Skies Crescent Radio, S-K-Y-E-S, SkiesCrescentRadio.com. And that is Jade's, uh, that's Jade's station. And she has us all in that little myriad of the Internet. Speaking of Jade, she's out this week. She is touring England. She's out there in England right now. And sitting with me today is is Preston. And wait, let's get, let's get Preston on the camera. Hello, live me people. We're also there. We're switching. Wait one second. Now you wave. Oh, okay. That's man. Preston. He's also a musician. He also has his own show out here because, called, called Ever Funkin' On. That's Fridays at 6 p.m., Ever Funkin' On. We'll get him to talk about that in a little while. Um, it has been, of course, as always, an interesting interesting week. Like I say, there's, um, there's a, you know, it was Halloween. My area, my, my neighborhood wasn't all that busy. Then again, my area doesn't have a lot of kids trick-or-treating. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could have got by with a whole pack of gum and that would have covered the whole neighborhood. But, you know, it's another story. Uh, speaking of which, um, I was... Um, I just printed up some stories over the week, and a lot of sick things happen in, well, Australia, and still investigating this one, but I was reading on a couple of news sources that there was a mom in Australia who decided 
to lace. She made lollipops. She laced the lollipops with chicken pox and then gave it out as candy to the trick-or-treaters. Saying, you know, trying to help the cause because she's not doesn't believe in vaccines. And this is what's going on. They're still, you know, I'm not going to mention her name because they're still looking into it. And I want to confirm exactly what she did. The quote was, I got the packaging down pat. And that's what she did. So trick or treat, put your hand in kids, take a couple. And now you got a couple of chicken pox lollipops. Hope the fl- I hope the lollipop was basically good because the kids are going to get sick a few days later. But that is what's going on. Um, yeah, I, I keep reading a lot of sick stories out of, uh, Australia, but I do have one. Wow. New Jersey produces them also. Wow. Okay. So, well, New Jersey, what can I say? There's a GoFundMe, you know, the, uh, crowdfunding thing on the internet, you know, everybody, we need your help. So send us a dollar. GoFundMe account has been launched for a man charged in a sex romp death of a New Jersey woman. Now, why am I... Hello, Chanita. I'm looking on live me also. I'm saying hello to everybody I know. Um, I know I normally... I normally uh, read stories. I try to get to funny stories, stupid stories. But this... And here's why it's stupid. This, and I'll just read this briefly. A, a, a fundraising campaign sought to, to garner $20,000 to be used toward a fair representation for a 21-year-old suspect... In the Hackensack Daily Voice reports, it reported, okay, we are raising money, so his name is what, Michael Gaffney, we're raising money so that Mike gets a fair representation in a world where the media is able to spin anything to match their agenda. The autop- he, what, what happened was, they were together at a party, somewhere, whatever, they left the party, whatever it was, they went into the car. Yeah, my may is charged with reckless manslaughter in the early Saturday death of Francis Victoria Garcia, also of Maywood. Court documents show the two had met through mutual friends, talked via social media before they planned to attend a, I like this, raucous, there's a word I never use, Halloween party Friday night. At some point early Saturday, the two left on the four, from the 14th floor of a luxury high-rise apartment complex in Hackensack, okay, let's plug Hackensack, to hang out in Garcia's car in a parking garage, the court documents say. When Garcia... Wow. Um, when Garcia passed out, Gaffney called his friend to come down to the car. The prosecutor I choked her, he said. She wanted to be choked, so he choked her. He killed her. That's what happened. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not an uncommon thing for whatever people, you know, what goes on in their in their moment, you know, whatever, okay. But obviously, he doesn't know what he's doing. He was too drunk to know what he was doing. His blood alcohol level came back at, whoo, pretty high. And then, uh, yeah, he was more than three times the legal limit of drunk. And now, there's a GoFundMe. And he's raised over six thousand dollars so far. So people who think he's just let me be a little bit sarcastic, he's just a misunderstood youth. He's looking to raise money to pay his lawyer because he killed somebody. And people are donating. And that's why I read this story. Because it's stupid. Yes, it's stupid. Happy Tuesday, Chenita. So yeah, this is what I'm sitting here reading that a guy killed somebody and people are paying and he's admitting to it. He, he I did it. Okay. Help me. There you go. There's one story down. This is what goes on. Back to Halloween. Speaking of which, how was your holiday? What did you dress as? Matter of fact, I do have a phone here. I'd love it if somebody would take advantage of this fact. 646-690-2976. 646-690-2976. I went to every party dressed as my usual invisible man. Yeah. Works every time. No one recognizes me. So, yeah, that's what's going on in the world. Um, a lot of dumbass stories I got. It's, it's incredible. This is a good one. I like this one. I got This is actually from Halloween. But, you know, by the time I get here, a week has gone by. Uh, <laughs> this, I like the New York Post. They get everybody's uh, stories. Let's see. Drunk man pleads guilty after he's caught trying to have sex with a pile of leaves. <laughs> okay are we ready for this on live me okay let's see michael golsorsky golsorsky excuse me 
was allegedly drunk and high on cannabis and cocaine when he tried to have sex with a pile of leaves in a UK hotel in a UK hotel parking lot last last month. And that's according to the Manchester Evening News. Okay. Premier Inn workers noticed the 26-year-old acting suspiciously in the hotel lot even before he got frisky with the fall <laughs> with the fall foliage. I like this. Then when he saw a white male <laughs> when he saw a white white male with his trousers down, we could see his bum. Okay, we're talking like the English. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, an unnamed hotel staff, staffer said in a statement, read in court. There is nothing between me and this man. He was about a car length away from me when he happened when he appeared to be having sex. So there you go. That's the gist of that story. They got him. He's uh he paid a hundred I guess in, in American dollars he paid a hundred and fifty eight dollar fine. He did two months in jail. And I guess we could now uh, refer to this guy as uh, a mulch muncher. I don't know what else to say. That's what he is. What? Preston's laughing at this. But th- this is, these are all true stories. This is what I get. This is what I do. It's 5.11. I'm going to play a song because, <laughs> what the hell? And, of course, my music never has anything to do with what I'm doing here. So what we're talking about. I was watching a lot of um, old movies on Turner Classic movies this week a lot of old films one of my favorites was on actually of a face in the crowd really a fantastic movie and this is um this is starring andy griffith if you don't know who andy griffith is well then you're a lot younger than me but pretty much he had his own show in the 60s 1960s the andy griffith show he was sheriff andy taylor in the fictitious town of mayberry north carolina and he was from north carolina so that worked well and he was always this, no matter what movie, no matter what he did, he was always this lovable type of guy, storytelling, you know, did, seemed a little, you know, not, he, he, was, he always had, was an intelligent character, but he had that, that down-home type of thing. Anyway, before he did this, he was in a 1957 movie, A Face in the Crowd, like I said. And he was this piece of shit character he was great never did it again but he was great in this movie and he sang a song and he's really a good singer he plays guitar he's a good singer anyway so i'm gonna go back to you got it okay so i'm gonna go back to 1957 from the soundtrack of a face in the crowd this is andy griffith and mama guitar That 
was there you go that was andy griffith yeah that was andy griffith singing this song that was a pretty good song he had a couple of albums he's actually a highly um awarded actor stage film he's all over the place anyway so what else is going on well just a lot of odd end stories let me see I mean, yeah, I'm looking. There are some really dumbass stories going on. Let me just go with this one over here. From Michigan. A mom fa It's always a mom. How about a woman faces jail time after returning library books two years late? A Michigan mom of five has been charged with returning library books two years late, potentially facing up to 93 days in jail. I really don't think it's I really don't think going to jail over these two books is okay. I guess not. I definitely didn't want to steal them. That's what she's saying. So pretty much that's what's happening. The Michigan Library is pressing charges. And I guess I guess uh yeah. So what does it say here? I didn't really think going to jail over these two books is okay. That's her name is Melinda Sanders Jones. Sanders Jones told the station that she had no idea. She even had the two overdue books until she tried to use a printer at Charlotte Library and told she was banned from using their services. All right, so she forgot about two books. Okay, just take the fees. No, they're pressing charges. Anyway, so... Yeah, she's got a problem. She's looking at 93 days and the $500 fine over two books. She was fingerprinted and appeared in court and is fighting to get the charges dropped by her next hearing this coming Thursday, which is in, oh, two days. And that's what's going I mean, this is the, there's some dumb crap out there. I got a, a killer who's getting crowdfund money and a woman who borrowed two books forgot to bring them back and is now facing three months in jail. This is good. This is nice. Someone tell me a story for a change. Tell me about the oddities of your day. 646-690-2976. Live me. Tell me about the oddities of your day. Who's out there? Tell me what's going on with you. Everyone has a day where something ridiculous comes up. What was going on ridiculous with me? I was... You ever pass by these stores, you know, the gypsies who want to read your palms, your crystal ball, your tarot cards, whatever. They're going to tell you your fortunes. That's great. But every now and then in my neighborhood, I go into the local, like, candy store where they sell the lottery tickets, and there's the gypsy playing scratch-off lotteries, playing a lotto. And I'm looking at her. I said, what happened? She goes, I lost. I said, well, and I'm having fun with her at her, at her expense. How are you losing? Don't you know? Aren't you the aren't you the, the the fortune teller? Can't you tell your fortune when you before you walk in? Can't you pick which scratch off lottery ticket to take? Don't you know? This isn't like I said. I get a kick at it. I laugh when I when I see these her, her and her family doing this. They're sitting there telling everyone else's fortune for whatever they whatever money they can get, giving some generic advice like, "I can tell you are not a person who wants to be wronged." Oh, okay, great. That's what everybody says, but. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. The gypsies are leaving it to fate. I like that. I like. I gotta. I gotta laugh at this. Uh, I also. I, I'm. I'm thinking of opening my own coffee shop so I can charge a reasonable price for coffee. It shouldn't cost you five dollars for iced coffee anywhere. It really shouldn't. But that's just how I think about it. And if you're going to charge that much, at least make it good. That's even bigger. At least make it good, which doesn't always happen either. So, you know, but that's just, again, how I think about it. It's 519. What else is going on? Well, I was watching some sports. As always, my Jets and my Giants suck. So over in baseball, means I have to watch the news. If you want some real comic relief, try watching the news. That's what I do. Whenever I'm feeling a little bit down in my spirits and life seems bad. And I just turn on one of the networks and say, look at these schmucks. And that's what I do all day long, every day. This just in, the same story we told you six hours ago. And breaking news, nothing has changed. Same story, six hours later. That's just what it is. What are the songs? What are the songs? I get songs. 
Uh, what stories do I want to tell you to? Let me tell tell you to. I'm babbling today. Here you got a woman who's changing her career. A woman has quit her job to eat fast food on camera. It gives me confidence. And this is a vlogger quit her full-time administrative job to sit again. Oh, I guess I'm reading the words duff, so I guess we're, in, we're overseas. To sit on her duff and scarf caloric grease-laden fast food for strangers online. It's not the first time I've ever heard this. It's an unorthodox career move, but 22-year-old Sharna Rowley of the UK thinks it will pay off that she will become the next big thing on YouTube. Well, I like that. I've seen her picture. She's on her way. Um, I have over 40,000 viewers with about 5,000 subscribed over all platforms, and they requ they can request all sorts, she tells. Oh, wow. Like like a wedding DJ rally, rally takes requests from, from viewers on what they want to see her eat. <coughs> okay, so you could write into her and suggest and, and request the food. And as long, I guess as long as she's not allergic to it or she likes it, I guess she'll eat it for you. So I can send her an email. I can send her, I want pizza. I want you, And she gets a lot of pizza, Chinese food. She gets a lot of the sloppier foods. I guess nobody wants to see her eat a salad. And... Um, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. So she's part of a bizarre, gluttonous online movement called Mukbang, where the viewers watch regular folks stuff their faces on YouTube while interacting with their audience. Who thinks of this shit? Well, she will when she finally goes to the bathroom, but who really thinks of this shit? She spent about $1,200 on her videos, but hopes they can parlay, she hopes to parlay her husband into a steady career. She wants to bring him into this also. Wow. Her financial goals are unclear. But, wow, Bethany Gaskin, a 44-year-old Cincinnati-based mukbang star who, star who sucks down shellfish, has reportedly made over $1 million from online advertisers. That that's really sad that people would actually pay you to do this to yourself. Then again, you're doing it to yourself, so you know. Right now, Miss Rowley weighs uh, 224 pounds, hits the gym three times a week for cardio sessions, but her fitness goals are more into the mouth-moving department. Her ultimate aim is to try to do a 10,000 calorie challenge. 10,000 calories in a day. That's a little bit of math. That's correct shopping. And that's, yeah, do that a few times. We'll see if you need a, a bypass. Wow. I don't get it. And she'll be able to do it for a while because she's only 22. So you could do what you want. Now, she's thinking like you're a gastro athlete, whatever they're called, who goes on the tours, eat like professional eaters. She's wrong. This isn't like the Nathan's, Nathan's hot dog eating contest and where they, where they do this all year because she's not in, sh oh man, good luck with that. Oh, what can I say? This is, uh, it's a sick world I live in. The world is my prop. I keep saying it. The world is my prop. And, you know, hey, I get to use all of it. And if I see you doing this to yourself in the park, I'm filming you. And I'm going to talk about it out here. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And if you'd like to write to me and tell me some crazy story, feel free. My email is upfrontfrank at gmail.com, upfrontfrank at gmail.com. And um, I wouldn't know else, what else to say about it, except it's, I hope she barfs on there. And that's all I got. Well, why? But I mean, well, that'd be like a highlight, a highlight, like an ESPN or whatever the equivalent would be, highlight reel. Yeah. And that's just what it would be. Yeah, so... I hope it's a good color and chunky, you know, for the replays. I'm going to play another song that has absolutely zero to do with what I'm talking about. You got number three? Yep. There you go. One of my favorites, of course, you know, Robin Adele Anderson's always doing something. This time she covered uh, the band Blink-182 and from their 2003 song, this is Robin Adele Anderson and I Miss You.
All right, I'm watching, I'm watching Preston hit all the knobs, change everything around. Cool. So I only really have a couple of more stories, and I have some more music because, you know, whatever, but um, not too many stories caught my eye. After a while, they all start sounding the same, and they're all on CNN. But anyway, here's a story. Again, dumb people who just can't help themselves. Back in Australia, where I keep on uh, keep finding a lot of sources, an Australian woman who spent twenty six thousand dollars on extreme tattoos, piercings, and other physical modification has revealed that she was blinded for three weeks after inking her eyeballs, changing the whites of your eyes to whatever color you want. Yeah, inking her eyeballs. Amber Luke. 24 years old, who calls herself Blue Eyes White Dragon, underwent an agonizing 40-minute procedure to fulfill this vision of herself. I like that. The body-piercing pro from central coast of New South Wales has about 200 tattoos all over her body, other enhancements including breast, lips, cheeks, what whimsical... What kind of words? These are like writing words. Whimsical elf-like ear implants. But most excruciating of all was having her blue dye injected into the whites of her eyeballs. Wow. Then temporarily losing sight of what she called a botched ink job. Well, according to her, her tattoo artist had gone too deep into her sclera. All right. Okay. I'm sure she's going to sue at some point because her vision's affected. If your eyeball procedure is done correctly, you're not supposed to go blind at all. All right. There we go. Now, I'm looking. One, there are two things I noticed about this story. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry on City World Radio and Sky's Crescent Radio that you can't see what this girl looks like. Because, well, one is, is that she did this at all. You're sticking needles into your eyes. You want to change the color of your eyes, go buy some lenses, pop them in like everybody else and wear them for a, a day, a six hours, whatever you want to do, and just take them out. There you go. Mission accomplished. Actors do it all the time. No, no, no. She stuck a needle into her eyes. And not only did this guy, not only did this, I don't even know if it was a guy or a girl, a man or a woman, but not only did this professional make the mistake in one eye, this professional made the mistake in two eyes because she was blind. And this is what people are willing to do to their bodies, risking their health to have this look that they could never be satisfied with. And I am looking at Amber. Amber has... Amber, this is where the press comes in. This, you don't get coverage for this for average-looking people. People my size, we don't get it. People pressing, no, we don't, we don't get coverage. Girls who just, you know, maybe you know, who look like everyone else you see in the street, no, they don't get it. You get pretty people, good-looking people, people with great body. I'm looking at Amber. This girl has, I can't tell through all the what she's done to her back or her rear, whatever, but she's in good shape. This girl looks okay, and she looks pretty good, as a matter of fact, and I'm sure she has no trouble getting a date. And Amber is sitting there screwing with herself between her between her million tattoos, which the artwork looks all right, nice and neat and whatever. So she's done with all these enhancements. She's just going for a, what does it say, Brazilian butt implants or whatever she's, <laughs> Brazilian butt implants. So she's going to raise her ass. Oh, wow. People are dumb. And this is really, I mean, this day, what, are you, what are people doing to themselves? Holy crap. Hop in. Get in there. You can't whisper it to me. Got to get in there. Okay. I was going to say it gives new meaning to uh, stick a needle in my eye, right? Yeah. yeah across my yeah. eye, I hope to die, right? <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I'm looking at this. She doesn't look to be like, I don't know how tall she is, but she looks pretty good to me. In the meantime, she's covered pretty much with all these tattoos she could pass for a reptile. Yeah, she could pass for a reptile. I blame the movie Goldfinger when they painted the girl bl gold, the entire body gold. I blame Goldfinger. But yes, yeah, so that's the story there. 
I'm going to play. Let's play some more music. What, okay, here we go. My favorite band has a new album out, and they're covering everybody for a change. You got them? Okay. So I'm very happy because it's the Mavericks. What can I say? I'm a happy guy. So anyway, they decided this time to cover a 1993 Patty Loveless song. This is even better. So from the, for their just released, the Mavericks play the hits. This is the Mavericks. Blame it on your heart. A lot of times, and with a cha-cha-cha, I sort of like that. Yes, yeah, a new album, and I have to go pick up my copy. I'm, but then again, why? Everything's on YouTube anyway. So, yeah. Um, yeah, what can I say? So, as I mentioned before, when we first started, Preston has a show. Ever, what, ever funkin' on, Fridays at 6 p.m. Yes, tune in every Friday, 6 p.m. Listen to me, Preston, also known as DJ Press Play. If you love funk, then you will love my show. Tell yes. us about tell us about your show. All right, yeah. Every uh, Friday, uh, I give you the funkiest jams of the past, present, and future. Each week uh, generally has a different theme, so we can go from jump from 60s to 
now basically but you know the funk tends to you know their peak periods of the 70s and 80s of course you know so i'll cover that or i'll do special artist profiles last week i did a great one on the red hot chili peppers uh this week i'll probably do some more alternative stuff well i'm still deciding but uh whatever it is is guaranteed to be funky and you know if you love to get down and groove then my show is the one to tune into no, so check that, it out that's a commercial <laughs> tell us no no Preston Preston yeah. <laughs> tell us about your show man oh. where do you get your sources how do you get it's, your sources how did you come about this uh, what made you put it together tell us uh, about your show just been doing it for the past uh, two years now it's been about two years um, you know it's just my lifelong love for uh, this great genre of music uh, you know I tend to get my sources online uh, via YouTube or MP3 sometimes I get submissions from people and you know I don't want to just discover also, or not discover but um, you know, focus on the popular stuff. There is that, but I also want to focus on a lot of underground, like obscure funk. There's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of names that people don't know about. So, you know, they, they're making equally, you know, funky stuff. And uh, that's what I try to do. I go from the very popular to the very rare to the, and everything in between. So so how do you pick by based on mood or you just uh, search at random and hope for the best? What do you, what do, you do? Yeah, just uh, whatever I feel like. I mean, you know, one week it could I could do something on, uh, you know, the great band Cameo. I did a special on them. Or I could do something like, uh, you know, jazz artists playing funk, you know, like uh, Al Jarreau or something like that, you know. Uh, so each week is a different theme. And uh, I, it's very mixtape style. It's very random. It's very, you know, I like to mix things up. So uh, cool. to, I like to surprise people and, you know. Uh, they're usually never disappointed. So, yeah. if anyone has a re- well, if anyone has a suggestion or a request, how do they find you? Uh, you can write to me at everfunkinon at gmail dot com, and um, yeah, any everfunkinon at gmail dot com. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, still deciding on Friday's show though. What do I do? <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's definitely guaranteed to be funny. Oh, f- not funny, but funky. <laughs> well, but. Well, I guess a little bit of humor in there. You, know. you can play some. You can play some stuff you haven't played in a while. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's always a new listener out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And on occasion, I also do uh, interviews too. So in the past, I've had, uh, you know, lots of different people, a lot of uh, funk players from past and present. Uh, everybody from Rick James's uh, band to, you know, Prince's first producer to um, this great artist in L.A. called Dame Funk, and uh, yeah, just a lot of you know different interviews and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So I don't just entertain, I educate, too. So There you go. Yeah. So you're a student of your game. Uh, absolutely. That's a good thing. Yep. Okay, let's get back on, switch the camera over here, seeing what we're doing. You just heard from Preston what he does, and which he thinks, uh, he thinks a lot like I do about music. Know what you're talking about, and look it up. At least look it up and find out the date that it was released, and know what you're talking about. I like knowing if I find that something that's obviously being covered, I'd like to know... The, at least who originally did it not who you first recognized doing i mean who originally did it a lot of the songs i play well not a lot but uh, uh, many of the songs i play go back to like 1930s uh, they just go back in time matter of fact i'm gonna play a quick song i'm gonna play a quick song that i found only because i like the way they sing it and that's just what I think. You you got him? Okay. I mean, this was written in 1893. This is the Mills Brothers and Yellowbird. Sit on a road like 
she's not with me today They're all the same The pretty girls Take tenderness Then they fly away That was the Mills Brothers. That was the Mills Brothers. That was Yellow Bird. I picked that song actually because it was written in 1893. I like that. So I just figured I'd give it a shot. And the Mills Brothers were always great. And I know not many people listening know who they are, but they were a fantastic singing group. Originally four brothers and, you know, became three. And they are always in good voice and just the way it is. So, yeah, you sort of got a... I like to look up some of the history of the music I play, depending on the song. Some things I really don't care about, but some of them, yeah, you really want to find out. Um, I got, like, one more story left, and I'll play some music out, and we'll just chat maybe for a couple of minutes and all that. So I was looking at an article on CNN, and the headline is, and I've spoken about this before, even the best intended of parents will screw up their kids. MRI show screen time linked to lower brain development in preschoolers. So let's say your three-year-old is playing with a tablet. There you go. Keep them quiet. And basically the article is, is that they're spending too much time on, on screens, on tablets, on television, that they're not, they're not developing properly. They don't do anything. You know, you've seen it used to be, well, I mean, I was a kid, if my parents wanted to keep me quiet, I had what, a crayons and a, and a coloring book. I sat, I colored, that was it. You had to do something. Now, I see kids with like $800 phones in their hands playing their video games. Tablets are sitting on the couch. Well, they're not crying, and parents have a little less aggravation, but really, your kids are, well, you're sort of stunting them mentally a little bit, stunting their growth, retarding their their development and that's i mean it's it's and no it's not the it's not saying you know, your kids are retarded i'm not using the term in that manner it's simply retarding to slow down that's what it means really to slow down to impede the progress get them out of the house do play with your kids make things interesting make them want to do something because yes they're sitting on they can work they can work the computer they can work the tablet they can work the phone but they don't know how to talk to other kids. They don't play. They don't get dirty. They don't do anything. And the second they start crying, well, parents want to shut them up. So give them a tablet. And it's not even like, I mean, well, I was a kid. What was I watching when I was that kind of an age? Sesame Street. But on Sesame Street, they sort of taught you something. This show is brought to you by the letter L. L O V E, love. L. A U and they just spell words L and they show you what it looks like and the, all the Muppets were teaching the kids all day long what you know numbers three plus two is five okay there you go it was something 
<coughs> now you just have them sitting on playing a video game and they're not learning anything. They're probably not even developing properly physically. They don't run around as much. They don't do anything as much. And, uh, you know, you have a thought? Yeah. So good. I was going to say, I just, I just read that uh, I think this week marks the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street. Yeah, so it's always a great show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a whole lot. Sesame Street, Sesame Street dealt with everything. Every topic in the world at the time, Sesame Street dealt with. Now you have them playing whatever games they can play. Uh, it, I feel bad. I really do. I feel bad for little kids. Yeah, they'll learn how to do something in school, but really, you know, you got to get them moving. You really have to get them moving get their bodies moving so that you know their bodies and their brains work together sitting and staring at a computer first of all you're also creating you're in a way creating an addict because they're so used to they get they get so used to the information being fed to them by a com- by a computer screen the visual it's just it's it's not it's just bad and then they have problems when they're not being played we're not playing on a phone a dead battery well i mean i may joke with people because i'm a battery nut but a dead battery to a three-year-old holy crap this could be this kid will dent the floor rolling around and kicking on it well you know to be fair you know i grew up with video games too but we had a balance though we had you know tv we had books we had how old are you uh, I'll be 37 in a couple of weeks. You didn't like, grow up with all this. Why'd you play at 37? Pac-Man once in a while? Oh, yeah. Something. <laughs> you you, you yeah. got a quarter from your parents and played a game. You played the, you yeah, know, the slot. That's yeah. not the same thing. No, yeah, no, 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 no. That's true. No, you weren't sitting. You you went out and you played. Well, Nintendo. We had the original Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. but you had to pick up your hands, your eye hand, eye cord. Right. Now you're playing a button. Right. And yeah, you had Nintendo, but you still went out of the house. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you you yeah. left. You yeah. played with your friends. Yeah, we played ball. Did your parents all. panic if you came home a little scraped up? Oh well, yeah, my mom did. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you know, uh, she'd be concerned like any yeah, other mother. So you didn't yeah. get beaten up, but I mean, yeah. if you fell down while you were playing, is this like a tragic thing? Yeah. You're home yeah, telling yeah. her about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I went home with a little something, what, 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 what did my mother give me? I had a like a wet rag. We cleaned me up, and that was it. You know, then dinner yeah. came up, yeah. and it's just it's it's kids of got <coughs> kids have got to to move they have to be doing doesn't mean you have to keep them occupied every minute of the day let them learn to play something quietly matter of fact give them a crayon and a coloring book let and a, a blank piece of paper let's see what they can create with all the things they see now on their video games and on television let's see what they could draw and that's all i can say about that because it is 5 50 and i am about out of here and I was thinking, which one? I'm going to leave, hmm, yeah, song number five will be a good one to get out with. Because we're talking about old songs. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm out of here in a, in a minute, just letting everyone know. And if I have to take a minute from the next show, because we don't know if they're showing up. So that's good for me also. Um, I'm just saying... Uh, yeah, get kids out. I want to see a pickup game in a, in a park somewhere. This is a ball. Ball. Bring back punch ball. Ball games. One ball can entertain 20 kids, I promise you. Anyway, that is the story. I am out of here. And I'm going to leave you with a song as always. So I'm going back. There was a tribute album to Doc Pomus a while, while back, 1989. And this one, this singer took two songs that he wrote, This Magic Moment and Dance With Me, and made a medley out of them. It was a great, I liked, I liked the production, good video. Anyway, I'm leaving you with Rick James, This Magic Moment, Dance With Me. I will see everybody next week. Have a good night.